Hi, Matt from Useful Charts here. Today we are going to do something special. Instead of looking at a chart made by me, we are going to look at some charts made by you. Last summer on the community tab on my channel, I asked people to send me submissions of charts that they had made. Uh, perhaps they were inspired by the charts on this channel uh, or they've been making charts for a long time. Uh, I was particularly looking for charts perhaps made in the similar style to the ones that uh, I show on my channel. And I got lots of submissions ranging um, from monarchy charts, uh, real world history to alternative history uh, to fantasy like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. And today we are going to take a look at what I received. And I think today is a great day to do this uh, because this channel has just reached 500,000 subscribers. So this is kind of a thank you video to all of you. Uh, in particular, I want to take the time to shout out those who support me on Patreon. So let's put their names up on the screen right now. These are my Duke level and Count level patrons. Thank you so much for all your support. Okay, just a few more things before we begin. Uh, first of all, I'm going to be looking at the charts in a random order. Uh, I have previewed uh, each one very quickly just to make sure they're all appropriate for YouTube, uh, but I'm gonna be reacting here with you in this video. I'm not going to mention anyone's name, uh, and that's simply because of privacy. Uh, some of the people who gave me submissions were under the age of 18, so I wanna be careful with people's privacy, uh, but uh, feel free to mention in the comments, hey, I'm the person who made some such and such a chart, and then people can talk to you about it there. I did set aside three charts, uh, which were my favorite, and I'm gonna save those to the very end, uh, as well as some links to some channels that people sent me where they go through charts kind of like what I do on this channel. So we'll be looking at those as well. Uh, finally, yes, that is a coronavirus chart that you see on my t-shirt. And if you're interested in getting a t-shirt like this, I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Okay, let's begin. The first chart we're going to look at looks like it is a chart of the House of Hohenzollern. So this is a house that I covered when we did the Prussian monarchs, but it looks like this chart goes back quite a lot farther uh, than what I did in that video. So it goes all the way back to the year 1010. And then you can see at this point, um, the house splits in two and the counts of Zollern, this line, eventually I do believe <clears throat> leads to, right the kings of Romania. So the kings of Romania were from the house of Hohenzollern, but from a different branch than uh, those that became the uh, German emperors and kings of Prussia. So you can see that it goes back really, really far, the, the split between those two branches. Um, so this here would be that main branch that eventually um, becomes the Prussian monarchs. And uh, I'm not going to go through each chart in, in very much depth. I mean, I could do a whole video on each one of these charts. Um, I'm just going to be taking a quick look and kind of showing you um, the style that each person used. Um, the great thing about a chart like this is um, on my chart, I'm only able to show so much detail because I'm trying to show all the various nations on one chart. But here, because this is focused only on one house, this person is able to go into much more detail and include all these junior branches and way more photos and images um, so that you get an even bigger picture. Um, so if we go down here, you can see that eventually um, we get the kings in Prussia and the kings of Prussia. Here's Frederick the Great. Of course, he did not have any surviving children. So the line passes through his younger brother and eventually they become 
the German emperors. And this chart goes all the way down to the present with the current head of the house. So very well done chart. I like it. Nicely uh, laid out, very clean, included the heraldry, lots of images. Very nice. All right, here is, it looks like uh, the Holy Land family tree. So this chart covers the various crusader states, it seems. So yeah, so I did a video on the kingdom of Jerusalem, uh, but this chart is a little bit more elaborate in that um, in addition to the kingdom of Jerusalem, you have the county of Edessa, the Principality of Antioch, and the County of Tripoli, uh, the four main crusader states. And it shows um, kind of the rulers of each one. Um, of course, in Jerusalem, uh, it changed uh, hands several times. You have various houses that ended up ruling Jerusalem, and sometimes they ruled some of the other crusader states at the same time. It's a very uh, turbulent period in history. They're talking about, you know, right smack in the middle of the medieval period. Um, and so this chart does a good job at like kind of making sense of the various rulers of the various crusader states. And again, they've included uh, heraldry and they've definitely kind of used the useful chart style here. Um, so yeah, this is this is great. I love seeing it. And uh, again, if when you focus on just kind of like one topic and that this is, you know, the topic is the Crusader States, you're able to, to give much more detail. And this, this person has given a lot more images than what I did on, on my chart of this same topic. So very well done. All right, what do we have here? Let's take a second to load, aha. Pocahontas. So we've got a bit of U.S. history here. Pocahontas is a well-known uh, Native American person. Um, way back at the, the very beginning of um, European colonization of the Americas. I know, I don't know a lot about Pocahontas, but uh, I know Disney did a movie, animated movie about her. Not sure how historically accurate that was, but um, certainly made that person, historical person's name a little more well known. Um, but I have heard that several of the US presidents um, can trace their ancestry back to Pocahontas. And obviously, they would have a lot of European um, blood as well. Um, Pocahontas married John, and then looks like through their grandchild, we get this major here. And then, okay, and through this line here, we get First Lady Edith Wilson. So she's a direct descendant. Um, who else? Oh, we got like a fairly recent senator from Virginia. So from this individual here, a fairly direct descendant. Here we have US President Harrison. How does he connect in? Uh, he connects in, I don't think he, he's a direct descendant, but he connects in through this marriage here. Let's see. Oh, I see, okay. So this is also showing the descendants of these two individuals who are considered the Adam and Eve of Virginia. So some very early settlers to the US and it's showing their descendants as well and how they connect into um, some of the major families in early US history. Uh, so it looks like Robert E. Lee connects back to them as well. So. I hope to do uh, some charts this year on U.S. presidents, especially like U.S. presidents from the past and how they can connect to each other if any of them are related distantly. And I want to show the connections there. All right. Looks like this is the Monarchs of Sweden. Um, I have we've we've done this um, this particular country on useful charts as well, and 
this person has done something similar, but because again, they're focused only on Sweden, they're able to give a little bit more detail and goes starts all the way back with the House of Munso, but then goes through the medieval period, includes the Kalmar Union, um, includes some heraldry here that I haven't seen, so that's, that's kind of neat. Of course, the House of Vasa, when Sweden becomes independent again. Um, Adol uh, Gustav Adolphus the Great, one of the more well-known Swedish kings. And then Queen Christina, I'd, I'd love to learn more about her. I, I read about her briefly, and she just seems very interesting. Perhaps Jack Rackham could do a video about her. I think that'd be great. And then we get the house of Bernardo all the way down to the present and the various siblings of Crown Princess Victoria. So that is Sweden. Wow, look at this. This is huge. This reminds me, look, it's going to take a while to load. This reminds me, a lot of people have asked me, because uh, I've got the European Royal Family Tree West and European Royal Family Tree East, and people said, well, why don't you combine them together and sell one big poster? And it looks like that's what this person has done. So they basically recreated my West chart, um, you know, and, and added their own things that they wanted to add. And then a lot of the East looks like it's over here. Um, you know, the reason why I haven't done this myself, um, all my posters that I sell are 24 by 36 inches, which is a standard poster size. So it's easy to get them printed at a fairly low cost and therefore sell it at a decent price. Um, but as soon as you get to like really large poster sizes, the price goes up a lot and it's way more complicated. So that's why I haven't done it. But Looks like this person has attempted it. And yeah, it's pretty difficult to do. It's complicated. I mean, look at all the lines going back and forth. This is obviously a huge file. It's even taking a long time to, to load. But here on the left, they have Charlemagne, of course. They've also shown Irene of Athens, who was writing around the same time in the Byzantine Empire. And then they've got the various um, Western European countries they've included some things that i don't on my chart so that's cool a few more images that i don't have kind of spread it out more so that they can um, untangle all these lines and then the eastern countries are over here as well bohemia hungary poland etc so Wow, kudos to whoever put the work in to make this because I'm sure this was a lot of work. Look at the detail on this. Amazing, 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 amazing. Um, we could spend a long time looking through this and it looks like it even goes down to the present. So, but unfortunately, um, we don't have all the time in the world and I want to get through everybody's chart. So let's keep going. O'Hara family tree. And I don't know that I know what this is. This looks like a Dis Disney characters, but like, a, like, like old style cartoons. Um, back to like the early Mickey Mouse period in Disney history. O'Hara, that's a very Irish name. So yeah, I'm not familiar with, with this particular family cartoon family. Um, but I really appreciate this person has laid it out so nicely. Um, you know, there's, I really like it when people do fictional charts of fictional families. Um, and I've done some myself because oftentimes if you're watching a TV show or, or reading a book or a graphic novel, I mean, there's so many characters and it's hard to sort them out. So when you put them in a chart like this, it's, it's uh, easy um, to kind of see the connections. So um, that's what this person has done for what I imagine would be one of their favorite um, Disney families. So well done. And they've used kind of the useful charts um, mythology style. Looks like kind of like my Greek gods chart. 
All right, let's keep going. All right, um, Iberian royal family tree. So Iberia would be uh, Spain, but also including Portugal, uh, the entire uh, Iberian Peninsula. And what's cool about this chart is it looks like it goes, yeah, it goes back way farther than I did with, with my Spanish uh, royal family tree chart and Portuguese chart. This goes all the way back to the Vandals and Visigoths, Ostrogoths and whatnot. So yeah, this entire section is missing from my chart. So there's Clovis of the Franks and he connects in. So this person has done a lot of work in that early period, which I really appreciate. Oh, and look, they've even included um, the Umayyad Caliphate, the Umayyad rulers of Spain. So yeah, a lot of Spain, and when I say Spain, I mean the entire Iberian Peninsula uh, was ruled by various Muslim dynasties at the same time as some of the Christian dynasties were starting to grow. And this looks like this chart shows so both Muslim rulers of Spain and the Christian leaders. So that's cool, all on one chart. Uh, I know that al Muqaddimah has done some of these Muslim dynasties and I've done the various uh, Christian dynasties. But then this chart looks like it then goes all the way down to, um, wow, through the Middle Ages. I mean, there's a lot of intermarriage between the various, like uh, from between Castile and Aragon and Navarre. And um, so this chart kind of sorts all that out and goes into way more detail than, than I'm able to um, using my poster. Um, so really appreciate that. Even Burgundy is on there. Then we go all the way to the modern time, Habsburgs, of course, and looks like it goes all the way down to the present. So very well done on um, kind of outlining the entirety of Spain, Portuguese, Iberian history there. Wow. All right, um, the Duchy of Courland and Semigalia. Not sure if I pronounced that correctly. I'm not even sure I know where that is. Obviously German. I know the Welf and the Wettens. Okay, so here we have Tsar Ivan V and then Empress Anna of Russia. So this would be her husband, I see. So this is the house of her. Empress Anna's husband, and then she was lovers with this guy from this house. So it's kind of, I guess this chart is kind of showing Empress Anna and the various connections uh, to German houses through her. So, um, you know, there's there's so many houses in Europe that I, I haven't been able to cover or even look into. Um, so this person um, has kind of done a chart for this particular house. So that's that's cool. Okay, I think you're gonna like this one. This is huge, so I'll start zoomed out. This is a Harry Potter family tree. Now I've read the books, I've seen all the movies, but I don't, I, I'm no expert on Harry Potter. It's been a while since I've been into Harry Potter. Um, so I've, I've gotten a lot of requests to do a Harry Potter chart and I haven't simply because I, I feel inadequate to do it. But this person must be a fan because they have done an incredible amount of work um, charting the Harry Potter family tree. So I'm just gonna take a look through this. I'm gonna start with the characters I'm most familiar with. So here we have Harry Potter. Uh, I know that he married Ginny, we uh, Ginny Weasley and they had some kids. Um, so there's his parents, his grandfather. He invented Sleek Easy's hair potion. That's kind of cool. Okay, and his great-grandfather owned the Cloak of Invisibility. So it looks like it only goes back to this Henry Potter, but then previous to this, it traces, let's go, traces the owners of the Cloak of Invisibility. So these aren't blood relatives, but kind of people who owned that cloak. Oh yeah, and then the 
black family is a very important family in Harry Potter universe. Sorry, I'm just kind of overwhelmed with all this information. So we have a black who was the headmaster of Hogwarts. Of course, the black that I know is Sirius Black. Uh, here he is. So the green is the black line. Oh, he was disowned, I see, right. And he becomes the godfather of Harry Potter. So, wow, they have a lot of, that family's huge, is connected to a lot of different people. I could spend a lot of time looking at this chart and learning about Harry Potter. I know Tonks, Mooney, their son was possible godfather in Harry Potter. A lot of people get disowned. Ah, now we get some of the bad guys. Draco and Malfoy's family, the Slytherins, Bellatrix Black. Oh, she's a member of the Black family too. And I don't know if I knew that. And she had a daughter with Lord Voldemort. I'm not sure that I knew that either. And this is cool because this chart also includes like a lot of these like important um, kind of objects and stuff. Uh, it kind of traces owner of the resurrection stone. Neat. What is this? Muggles. So there's some really cool logos. I'm not even sure what all I'm looking at, but this is amazing. Oh, and look at here. Here we have some actual kings and queens of the United of England, and even Queen Elizabeth and Queen Victoria. Oh, cool. So this is kind of how <laughs> the various monarchs in the UK uh, and earlier England kind of fit into the lore. So that's amazing, all these little explanations. Oh, yeah, and then each house. Okay, so here we have kind of the house founders up at the top. There's Gryffindor, Slytherin, and then each house kind of has a house ghost. So it shows how the ghosts are connected as well. I guess nearly headless Nick is somehow connected to Henry the Seventh. Well, that's kind of cool. And there's the Ravenclaw founder, another ghost, Hufflepuff. If we go down here, oh, and there's Dumbledore, his family. Oh, and then of course the Longbottoms. My man, Neville Longbottom, the Weasley family, of course, is on there. Oh, yeah, and then I actually haven't seen these newer movies, but it looks like those people are on here, too. So, man, this is an amazing chart. Wow, Harry Potter. Very cool. I love seeing these uh, kind of fantasy-based charts, as well as the history charts. Oh, looks like this is another Spanish monarchy chart, but in a very different style. So that's interesting. Starting all the way up with Plagio. And uh, this chart has a lot more of the images of the various monarchs. So that's cool. Basically is going through uh, Leon, Castile. There's the Trastamaras. I won't go through this in much detail because we just looked at a Spanish chart all the way down to the present. So that's kind of neat. I like it. It's a more simple style, but you can kind of just follow the main rulers really easily. You know, in making charts, it's difficult sometimes to find the balance between too much information and not enough information. Uh, oh, here's another Hohenzollern one. So we already looked at a Hohenzollern one, but here's another one. This one seems to be color-coded um, nicely. Everything's lined up very nicely. So, oh, why won't it let me zoom in? Um, I want to zoom in on this. Let's try this. There we go. So it starts up here at the top with who? About a thousand years ago with the first count of Zollern, okay. And then I assume we get that same split Yes, where this, this branch is going to lead to um, Romania. And then this branch here is going to lead to Prussia, the German Empire. But this chart looks like it shows a lot more of the junior branches, a lot of like brothers and siblings, and so forth. So I assume if we go down here, 
We're eventually going to come to the Prussians. Yes, we do. There's Frederick the Great. So, wow. I mean, this is, this includes way more detail than I'm able to on my chart. So, you know, this chart would be great if you're just really interested in, in this particular house and you want to know all the siblings and whatnot. And it goes down to the German members as well. All right, um, we've got a couple repeats here. Looks like we have Sweden here again, too. Um, this one starts only with the House of Vasa, so it doesn't go back quite as far, um, but definitely uses kind of the useful charts style and includes more detail than my chart does. So that's good. Shows some of how the wives. Um, were also descendants of various earlier kings and goes down to the present. And always good when people provide a key as well to the various colors and, and whatnot. So, so that's Sweden again. Oh, this is something different. Masters of the Universe. So this is a fictional world. Oh, you know what? I know what this is. This is a this is a very old TV program cartoon. Uh, I when I was a kid, I knew about He Man and Skeletor. So not sure if this was created by someone more my age, or maybe this show is on in reruns or something. Um, but yeah, it's a very old show. I didn't know there were so many characters and that they were connected as a family. So both He Man and Skeletor both descend from this King Miro. I did not know that. Um, all I remember of He-Man was this sword that he had. They used to sell action fingers, figures of He-Man and Skeletor. And he used to hold up this sword and say, by the power of Grayskull. Um, so yeah, I really love seeing these fictional world um, this one, again, is made in the style of my mythology charts, so pretty neat. Okay, oh, this is interesting. This is something different. Looks like this is a family tree of the Aga Khan. The Aga Khan is um, a religious leader. Um, there's kind of a, I guess he would be a branch of Islam, uh, Nizari branch, uh, which I believe would be a Shiite branch. Um, I always go to Al my, my good friend Al Mukadima for questions about Islamic things, but I do know the Aga Khan. I, mean, I don't know that he's considered a monarch, but it looks like because he doesn't like have his own country. Not that I know of, but it looks like his relatives are all, they all use the title prince and princess. So I guess he is a monarch. I guess maybe. In the way that the Pope is a monarch? I'm not sure. Oh, and look at that. There's Rita Hayworth. I like looking at these trees that I don't know much about. Rita Hayworth is a, a famous um, American actress. So it looks like she was married to the current Aga Khan's father. She was a second marriage. So I did not know that she ties into that tree. Um... Of course, Grace Kelly, another American actress. She married uh, the Prince of Monaco. Um, okay, so he's Aga Khan number four. So before him, looks like was his grandfather, the third Aga Khan. And there's only been four. So it goes back here to his great, great, great grandfather, it looks like. And then he's a descendant of the Fatimid Caliphs of Egypt. But I did not know this. He's also looks like the Qajar family um, ties in here. The Qajars ruled Iran for a long time. So the current Aga Khan is a descendant of both the Qajar dynasty and the Fatimid dynasty. So that, that's, that's interesting. Okay. Aga Khan. All right. All right, back to uh, a European house, a well-known European house, the House of Saxe, Coburg, and Gotha. Of course, that is the house that Queen Elizabeth belongs to, as well as the King of Belgium. 
uh, they actually come from the same patrilineal house. Um, it's just that in the UK, they changed the house name to Windsor, so they would sound less German. That was done during World War I when they were fighting against Germans, so that made sense. Um, but this is an interesting house because it had a very long reach. Not only was it ruling eventually in the UK and in Belgium, but it also ruled in Bulgaria, in Portugal, and by extension in Brazil as well. Um, although that would have been, I guess, yeah, they were would have been a, a female branch in Brazil. Um, and then, of course, they were also dukes of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. So this kind of lays it all out. Um, there's an interesting curse. Um, I often thought about doing a video about this uh, related to this family called the Coburg curse. Um, I think it was the Bulgarian branch that's involved, but some monk placed a curse on that branch of the family and then there was all kinds of like tragic deaths or something. Um, you can write about that in the comments if you know more details. So the head of this house, strangely, isn't the queen. Uh, even though she's the most senior member, um, although she's not a male line member. Um, being a German house, uh, they always need to have a male as head of the house. And it looks like what happened was um, back when Edward became the king of the UK, they wanted to separate the dukedom from the kingdom. So his younger brother became duke and then that got passed on to some junior branches of the British royal family here. So the current head of the house is um, distantly related to the UK. Well, not too distantly. Um, he's a descendant of Queen Victoria, but he's kind of the head of this house. Um, but he's not actually the monarch of any particular country. Okay, what do we have here? Imperial Succession of the Holy Light Empire. So I'm not sure if this is from a series, book series or show or something, or maybe this is even just a world that someone has created like on their own. Um, you know, sometimes it's fun to just create your very own world uh, and you can give that world um, monarchs, you can give them languages, you can give them a timeline in history and whatnot. It looks like maybe this is what this is. Not 100% sure, but some nice heraldry is there as well. And it looks like this chart is interesting because it looks like there was various houses and this, it looks like it's kind of like the Holy Roman Empire where the emperorship kind of jumped from one house to the other. And this person uses these red lines to show that happening, which is kind of a useful way to do that. Uh, Cause you want to show the family, but then you also want to show like how the throne passed. So um, that's cool. The house of the unicorn looks like is the most recent. So that, that's cool. A fictional possible, possibly someone's own very own world that they have created. Um, Okay, here's another one, uh, Witcher World. Um, I think this is a series. Um, or it could be a world someone has created. I'm not sure. Um, but again, some nice heraldry and lots of different houses. Um, maybe if I go down here, created by Witcher Flicks witcherflix.com. So I think actually this is some kind of series that someone has created. I'm not sure if the person who created this chart has created that series series, or what. You can tell me in the comments, but it's definitely a very nice family tree. It's laid out nicely, and then it shows the various connections between all these different houses. So it looks kind of like a European royal tree, but of a fictional universe, the Northern Kingdoms. All right. All right, here we have the Lord of the Rings. I definitely know what this is. Um, I've had requests to do something on the Lord of the Rings. I haven't yet. I mean, I've read the books, I've seen the movies, um, but I'm by no means a Lord of the Rings expert. 
So this chart is the kings of Gondor, Gondor being one of the main kingdoms. The House of Elros. So it starts with this guy here who we see at the beginning of one, a uh, couple of the movies, I think. And then I think it's this guy Isildur. Doesn't he take the ring and then he loses it in the river? And then Gollum finds it, I think. So J.R. Tolkien is, is known for his complex genealogies and he gives all kinds of timeline information in, in the book, sometimes as a kind of an appendix form, but sometime in the text itself. If you've ever read The Cimmerillion, it's very dense with just so much information about the world he's created. So here are all the kings of Gondor going back a very long time. Of course, most of these folks don't show up in like the Lord of the Rings books or The Hobbit or anything. If we go all the way down, let's see, I know Aragorn. I mean, I know Aragorn and Arwen. So he ends up becoming the king. And I guess, so the last king before him would have been this guy. I'm not sure the date. If these are dates, that's like almost a thousand years. So I'm not sure. But let's zoom out here. So it looks like he connects into... The kings of Gondor, I see. So he's this like distant descendant of these earlier kings through this kind of, I guess, would have been a junior branch here. And this would have been the senior branch that eventually ended. And then he's kind of this um, long lost king. But he's also a descendant. I see in the male line, he's, he's a descendant of the kings of this place here, which if you go back far enough, can connect into Isidore. Okay, so yeah, I'm not up on my Lord of the Rings lore, but obviously this person knows more than me and has created a very nice chart for the kings of Gondor. All right, some more U.S. history. We got Abraham Lincoln, definitely a president that I'll be looking to at some point if I end up covering more presidents. Looks like this is mostly his ancestry on the male line, going back to, uh, I guess this would be prob prob probably the first ancestor, male line ancestor to come to the US. But then he's also given some of the maternal information there as well. So simple chart, but useful if we want to know about Abraham Lincoln, one of the more popular US presidents. Okay, and we are back to Lord of the Rings. Uh, this is a very wide chart, so I think what I'll have to do here is zoom into one portion. This is a Hobbit family tree. Let's start with uh, the Baggins, because I know the Baggins. So there's Frodo. Um, and where's Bilbo? Do -do -do. Okay, there's Bilbo. No, that's not Bilbo. There's Bilbo. Bilbo Baggins. So Bilbo Baggins, that's his father. And his father's brother, so that's his cousin. And then, oh no, that's someone connects way over there. So how does Frodo connect to Bilbo? Bil this Bilbo, or Frodo's dad, Frodo's granddad, great granddad. Okay, so I didn't know Frodo and Bilbo's connection looked looks like it. you have to go back pretty far. So they're like second or third cousins and maybe some once removes moved in there too. So, okay. So anyway, this is a family tree of the various Hobbit families of which there are many. And here, I guess is a color coded key. Um, so, wow. Again, a lot of work someone's put into um, Lord of the Rings lore. So, and here's the Tooks, Pippin Took. I think, isn't it Pippin who says he comes from a very old, well-established Shire family? And there's numbers here. And I think that's because, they, I mean, they weren't monarchs or anything, but they had some kind of role in the Shire in their village. And so I assume this is kind of showing the, the various leaders the Tooks, and then you have the Brandybucks, Mary Brandybuck, one of the main hobbits 
in the Lord of the Rings. Um, sorry, I'm I'm gonna have to go through quickly through all of this, but this this could be like a whole video series um, about all the different Hobbit families, uh, and then we have Sam here as well. So let me just look at the. Is there any kind of information? I thought there was. Um, I don't know. Okay. I thought. No. Okay. I thought it said what the titles were somewhere. Ah, uh, yeah. Here it is. Sorry. Um, this note here says the Masters of Buckland uh, was the title. Um, that was given to the Took family, and then I guess sometimes the Brandy Book family as well. So there you go. So amazing chart somebody made about hobbits. So Lord of the Rings certainly has a lot of material um, out there that uh, could be used for creating wonderful charts. I know there was a guy, I think his website is LOTR, LOTRproject.com, I think it is. Uh, he used to make a lot of Lord of the Rings chart. So if you want to check that out, you might want to do that. Wow, this is another very wide chart. And, oh, this is the Medici's or Medici. I'm not 100% sure yet. You know, I'm horrible at pronunciation. I will just admit that up front. It gets mentioned a lot on my channel. I always say it's it's because I'm such a visual person that I then become bad at the pronunciation stuff, but I should work on it. If I, I, I do have a video about the Medici's and the Borgias. Uh, it's an older one, and I do plan to remake that eventually. I, I was planning to make a big chart myself about the various Renaissance, Italian Renaissance families. I haven't gotten around to it yet. Busy with so many other projects, but perhaps I will. And if I do, I should definitely learn how to pronounce Medici. Um, but here's the part of the tree that I'm familiar with. You got some of the popes uh, were from the Medici family. And then Lorenzo Medici was like one of the mo more important members of the family. They went on to rule in Tuscany as well. But I didn't know there were so many known members of this family. I mean, this, whoever made this tree traces it back really far. I didn't know we could go back that far. And and they've got all these um, junior branches and stuff as, as well that I didn't even know existed or that we had records of. So th this is huge. I'm going to have to look at this in more detail if I ever cover the Medicis. Whoa, and look at this. That goes, wow. A lot. This is a lot of Medici's. This is huge. So, wow. Don't know if this person's a member of this family or, or just has studied them a lot or what, but that is amazing. It's really amazing if you can go in so much detail on one particular family. I mean, I usually just do these broad overviews, but depending on what your interest is, I like to see people that go so in-depth. Uh, what do we have here? Back to Spain, I do believe. Oh, this is the Visigoths. So yet again, remember, I, I didn't cover the Visigoths in my charts or in my video. And so once again, this person has done that and has color coded it nicely. So, okay, and there's a link to Cantabria. And it looks like on the next page, there's a timeline with maps as well. So it's kind of a nice overview of the Visigothic kingdom. Who will be king of Romania today? I haven't done a separate video on Romania, but I talked about Romania a lot in my video about who would be king of Canada, strangely enough. If you watch that video, you'll know why. Uh, but this person looks like they have um, done a more detailed chart. I, I wasn't aware of this line over here. There's this other line here. Look, this person, heir of the Romanian kingdom. And then I know that this person here is also considered 
kind of be to be the heir. So I guess it depends on whether or not you accept a female heir or not. So this kind of shows the various options. And then uh, the presidents and prime ministers are given as well, color coded with party affiliation. So that's that's kind of neat. So any Romanians out there might be interested in that. And then, ah, this is the Andretti family tree. These guys are race car drivers. And I know that uh, because my son, my son Moses, who I've mentioned, he's an adult now, so I can mention his name. I have two sons. Um, the eldest is Moses, he's 19. He has his own YouTube channel, uh, which focuses on video games. I've linked to that before. Um, and he's really into car racing. It's one of his hobbies. Uh, and he happens to be a mechanic as well. He's a car mechanic. So um, he would know more about the Andrettis than me. I, I know Mario Andretti, Michael Andretti. I've heard their names. And I knew that their family was quite large and involved in kind of the racing car industry. So it's kind of neat to see this laid out. I've, I've never done kind of a sports family before. Uh, so I guess this could kind of fall under a sports family. Uh, would have been cool to see some of the photos of some of these people, but sometimes it's hard to get copyright free photos. Um, all right, let's keep going here. Ah, the Incas. I've been planning to do the Incas on my channel. I haven't just haven't gotten around to it. Um, I mean, they're another major empire in pre-colonial Americas that, I mean, they're just one of the more well-known ones that just, I, sh I should definitely cover them. Um, and they go back even, um, they go back further than the, the Inca empire. They were like kings before they became emperors. Um, and this person has managed to find kind of nice images for each ruler as well. So that's, that's cool. One of the main emperors here. And then all the way to, um, they were conquered by the Spanish. So um, I appreciate that someone made this particular um, chart because if I never do get around to it, here you go. You can take a look at this, but I do hopefully, hopefully we'll cover the Incas. So thank you to whoever did that. All right. Um, ah, the Tokugawa shogunate. Well, I did a video on Japan, but I, I focused on the emperors. Uh, the emperors uh, for much of Japanese history, of course, were just figureheads. And uh, for a long time, the shoguns were really the real monarch. Um, so I thought about doing something on shoguns, and, and this person has done a, a shogunate chart. So this is a chart of the shoguns. And, and they basically, that title was passed heredit, uh, her, um, hereditarily, hereditary. It was a hereditary line. Sorry, I'm getting all tongue tied here. Um, it was passed as if it was a monarchy. Um, although you can see some adoptions in here. And this goes all the way up to like kind of the modern Japanese imperial period. So the Tokugawa clan, that's cool. Shoguns. Thank you, whoever did that. I like to see some of these non-European charts. Um, kind of interesting. What do we have here, King James? You know, I don't think this is a historical chart. This is something imaginary, I believe. I believe this one was made, I believe the person who sent this is 10 years old. And I really appreciate, you know, some of these charts have been made by people that are quite young. And I think we really have to um, appreciate um, the work that is done um, here. And, you know, making charts like this, even when they're imaginary, you know, can be just a lot of fun. Uh, to kind of create your own imaginary world and imaginary characters. And I've done that myself and still do that myself sometimes. So for all of you out there who do that sort of thing, um, I think it's a good idea. You don't have to uh, feel like it's silly or anything like that. I, I think it's super cool. 
Odin. Oh, okay. So here we have the kings of Mercia. So these are, uh, um, okay, Northia, Northumbria, Wessex. So these are the various Anglo-Saxon kingdoms before they kind of, you know, merged together in and became England. So traditionally it's said that there were seven, but that kind of changed up and down over time. So here we have mostly Northumbria, Mercia. Mercia was one of the dominant ones for a long time. And then Wessex eventually with Alfred the Great ends up dominating and then kind of becomes England. Um, so this kind of shows us what happened before England um, with some of the main kings of those Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. So again, I like seeing these charts that cover areas that I haven't covered on my own charts. It kind of like fills in the blanks. Um, that's really nice to see. Um, and I guess all of the various Anglo-Saxon lines supposedly go all the way back to Odin. All right, a couple more here. This is the Greek gods. Of course, I've done a chart on the Greek gods. This one's a little different style. It's just kind of a text-based family tree chart, which is sometimes good because then you can fit more in without it getting too complicated. So, um, you know, the, the other thing you got to keep in mind about these mythology charts, and I said it in my own video, is, is that... Um, there's alternative versions, um, you know, depending on what sources you use. I always think it's funny when people get angry about mythology family trees and say, no, it's not right, it should be this way. It's like, well, some people think it's that way, some people think it's that way. It's, it's mythology, it's, you know, it, it can be understood in different ways. Adams. Okay, this is not the Adams family as in the horror genre. This is the Adams family as in two US vice presidents. There's only been a, a handful of um, vice, or sorry, not vice presidents, presidents. Um, US presidents that were like father, son. Of course, the Bushes um, leap to mind, but um, we had the Adams as well, John Adams and then John Quincy Adams. So again, when I look at presidents later this year, I'll probably talk about them see if they're connected to anybody else. Uh, what do we have here? The Lion King. Oh, this is cool. Well, too bad it doesn't have the images because I know who Simba is and Mufasa and Scar. So I guess Simba and Nala had some kids. This, this must be from like the extended universe or something. It's kind of cool. So you got the supporters of Scar, the bad guy. And then the Pride Lands Royal family. Oh, nice key here. Key is always important. Okay, I see. So some of these are mentors, or some are adopted or bloodlines. Interesting. Very cool. All right. Uh, this is... Oh, Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. So Romeo and Juliet has two houses, the houses of Montague and Capulet, and they hate each other. And then, of course, Romeo and Juliet fall in love, and it becomes a big thing. Um, I really should do more charts about Shakespeare, because it's, oftentimes it's hard to get your head around all the characters. So that's why this chart um, is quite useful. And, you know, it's good with, with these kind of charts, um, you know, not always just to show, like, blood links and marriage links, but like this shows also servants and friends. And sometimes it's good to throw in other characters as well to see how people are related. So thank you to whoever made this. Okay, now I want to show you the last three. And these three I have chosen uh, because they were my favorites of all the charts that were sent. Now, I must say, I enjoyed all of the charts, but I just wanted to give a special uh, shout out to the people who made these last three, because I really liked them. Uh, the first one um, is the Mayan dynasties of the classical period. And I really like this one because um, it covers all the various city-states um, in the Mayan civilization. Um, on this channel, we talked about the Palenque city-state, uh, but not only does this have Palenque, 
it has all the other nearby Mayan states as well. Of course, the Mayans, they were not like an empire or like a unified kingdom. Uh, they were more of a group of smaller city-states like Renaissance Italy. So uh, they had a bunch of different rulers in each city. And so this chart nicely outlines them all. And um, I really like it because, you know, so often we focus on uh, European monarchies uh, on this channel. And uh, this is something different. It's one of the main um, civilizations in the Americas pre-European uh, colonization. I love the symbols that are used for each ruler. The Mayans developed a writing system that was just so unique as compared to other parts of the world. And this chart really highlights that as well. Um, so I just like that it's it's very nicely laid out. It's um, clean, tidy, and just really interesting. So that's why I included this one as one of my favorite three. Uh, I'll also mention that this creator does have a channel, a YouTube channel. Um, so I will link to that in the description so you can check it out. Okay, these last three, they're not in any particular order. I liked all three of them. Um, this one, it's going to take a while to load because it's huge. This one's called the History of the Holy Roman Empire. and it is just an amazing amount of detail. Um, not only does it have the family tree chart in the middle, uh, but off here to the side, it has a timeline uh, showing the uh, emp emperor. It also has maps. It also has the various electors of the empire um, and several other uh, ex explanatory charts. Um, here's like a little flow chart uh, explaining how it was organized. And then also shows kind of like the current uh, provinces or states within Germany. Um, so here's a map of today. So it really kind of unifies everything and just shows you how um, Germany evolved over the centuries. Um, so yeah, on my uh, European royal family tree chart, I mostly just have the emperors. But this chart has like all the various dukes uh, of all the various uh, important duchies and states that existed within the Holy Roman Empire. And there were a lot of them. So this nicely lays out all the different German houses. And it's very nicely color coded. You can see the explanation up here. And I just think it's it's super well done. It's very comprehensive. Um, just a lot of really good detail, a lot of images. And of course, it goes all the way up to the present. So even though it's talking about the Holy Roman Empire, it does cover the period after the Holy Roman Empire to show how things evolved into modern states like the Netherlands uh, and so forth. So, wow, a lot of work went into the creation of this particular chart. So that is why it was one of my top three favorites. Okay, so the last one I want to show you is called the Dark Ages Family Tree. And this one is by a creator called the Portuguese Historian. And they also have uh, a separate YouTube channel, which I'll link to in the description. You'll want to check that out. Um, and I really like this one because in my own work, um, I have the European royal family tree, West and East, but they both basically um, start around the time of Charlemagne. And you can see on this chart that Charlemagne's almost at the bottom. And so there's kind of an assumption, uh, if you just look at my charts, you kind of assume that everything started with Charlemagne and there's not much before him, which is really incorrect. Uh, but just looking at this chart, you can say, you can see here Charlemagne and look, there's lots of stuff before him. Um, and this chart very nicely fills in the gap. Um, you know, that, it, and it's just a whole area that I haven't yet charted and this person has. So before Charlemagne, you have all these different um, dynasties, um, 
you know, they started off kind of as barbarian houses, but then they became Christianized and set up their own kingdom. So you got the Franks, the Goths, the Ostrogoths, the Vandals, the Visigoths, and so forth. Um, they've also included um, the Byzantines here, though, and even the Sassanids, which were the dynasty over in Persia. So this really takes you from the fall of the Western Roman Empire um, all the way down to the time of Charlemagne. So I just really appreciate the amount of work. Again, this is just really detailed, really nicely laid out. Um, and I just really appreciate it because it's, it's an area that I haven't yet uh, charted. And I don't know if I'll get, get around to doing it, but I'm just so happy that this person has done it. So you can see big names like Justinian and um, Clovis, Theodoric, uh, and so forth. So um, again, this chart uh, is by this channel here. You can see it in the corner and I'll link to that channel in the description. So speaking of channels, <clears throat> There were a couple of other channels I wanted to introduce you to. Um, here's one called the Filipino Genealogy Channel. So I know that I have a lot of subscribers from the Philippines, and I've never done a chart about the Philippines. Uh, so here's a whole channel uh, dedicated to Filipino genealogy. And you can see this person already has uh, over 2,000 subscribers. Um, so there's a lot of Filipino history here. Um, as well as some videos that uh, use kind of a, a family tree format, um, whether they be political families um, or like here, here's one about uh, a certain sultanate um, that ruled in the Philippines for some time. I don't think the sound is going to come through very well, but... He had three... Basically, it's similar to my style. It's an explanation um, of, of the chart. So if you're from the Philippines and are interested in Filipino history, you are definitely going to want to check out this channel. Uh, another one I want to show you is Jake the Genealogist. And he's got lots of interesting um, videos, some are uh, fictional worlds like here. My name is Jake the Genealogist, and in today's video, we will be going over a very famous Baggins family tree. So here is um, another chart about hobbits. I don't think this is this is a different um, creator than the one who made the earlier Hobbit uh, chart, but um, kind of similar idea, talking about all the different uh, families from Lord of the Rings. Uh, but this channel also has historical charts. Um, so here's one about Anne Frank. So again, interesting video, lots of information about her family, extended family. Most of us have heard of Anne Frank, but we don't necessarily know about all her relatives. And this, this video goes through it. So I definitely recommend this channel. Um, he definitely deserves more subscribers, so go check him out. And finally, I want to point out Cardinal Conkey. Uh, and this young fellow has some really interesting videos. Uh, very impressed uh, by this person's charts. Uh, there's a good range here. There's only a couple, but here's one, which... Um, I really found interesting is about the um, Irish or Celtic gods this is a topic that I actually don't know a lot about. Um, and this person has just done a lot of detailed research on the various gods and, and how they connect. So if you're interested in that, you, you definitely want to check out that video. Um, but then he's also got uh, a chart here he's been working on about popes that just looks really, really detailed as well. So amazing stuff on that channel. So like I said, I will link to that in the description as well. 
Okay, so there you have it, some great submissions. And I wanna thank everyone who submitted a chart. If for some reason I forgot to show you a chart or it got lost in the shuffle somehow, I do apologize. Uh, thank you to everyone who sent something in. Uh, if in future anyone ever wants to send in charts, uh, not sure if I'll do another video like this. If I get enough charts, maybe I will. So, Or if you just want to show me the chart you made, I love seeing submissions. So you can send those in to help, H-E-L-P, at usefulcharts.com. And I will definitely take a look at everything I receive. Uh, also, if you have channels where you are doing something similar to what I do, uh, making charts about genealogy, uh, or royal lines and going through them, uh, give me a link to your channel and who knows, maybe I'll give you a, a shout out sometime as well. Thank you once again for helping me achieve 500,000 subscribers. Uh, can we hit 1 million by the end of 2021? I don't know, let's try to do it. I've got some great stuff planned and uh, hope to have you on board along the way and hopefully we can chat a little bit in the comments. Thanks for watching.